I'm going to give you guys a quick minute just to kind of pop on um, so that we can make sure that we have plenty of people. But I am super excited because we have Paul C. Brunson, who is going to talk to us about his new show. And we're going to get all of our questions answered um, for uh, single moms, but also single parents. I love that I saw in one post that this was for single parents because I know there's some single dads out there um, that really want to, um, to get love too. So I am super excited. So everybody kind of jump on. I'll give you a minute. Okay. Okay. All right. Nice. I like it. I like it. Okay. So let me tell you a little bit about Paul. I have known Paul forever and I have a really funny story <laughs> that I'm going to share about Paul that I don't even know if he remembers, but I'm going to share it during the broadcast. We have 30 minutes to talk to Paul. He is on a social media circuit like I have never seen. So we're going to utilize this time to the best of our abilities. But for those who are not familiar, matchmaker Paul C. Brunchen is like the real life version of Will Smith's hit movie, Hitch. He is um, one of the premier matchmakers. He's also recognized as one of the most influential small business leaders in the world. Um, he's appeared on the OWN Network. He was a co-host of Love Town. Um, and he just has a really unique understanding and perspective of not only relationships, um, personal relationships, but also business relationships. He hosts Mentor Monday. And like I said, he is doing this amazing thing um, to premiere uh, his new show tonight called Help, I Need Love. It's today at 10 p.m. Eastern on ABC, but I want to introduce you uh, to Paul. Hey, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm a little scared because I don't know what the story is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't remember it. That's why it's so funny to me. And I barely <laughs> remembered it until I started doing some research. And I was like, ah, I got you. I got you. So uh, well, let me start with this, because I think that there are a lot of people and I mean, I have the full single mom experience. So let me be very clear. Um, why is it so hard <laughs> for single parents to find love? Yeah. I, I, I think the number one reason why is because there's so many misconceptions, so many myths about single parents. And that was one of the big reasons why I wanted to do this show is to help to destroy those myths that exist. So I think that's one thing. The other thing that I noticed, especially filming this show, working with the single moms and having single moms as clients throughout the matchmaking days, is that everyone that I've worked with, and actually the single dads fall into the same, you know, the same category, is that they take all of their time, all of their energy, all of their resources, all of their love, and they pour it into their children. They, they pour it to their children. And then they've got just a little bit left, and with that little bit left, they try to give it to friends and family, and there's none to come back around to themselves. None. That's a mention career. <laughs> That's a mention career, right? Yes. So tell me how this concept, because when I was reading more about the show Help, I Need Love, which airs tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern on ABC, it was just really fascinating. Not only do you host it, but you're the executive producer. It's kind of like a docu-series, right? Right. 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 So how did this whole thing come about? Yeah, th this has been a long time coming. I mean, I've, I've had, so I, I kind of kicked off my TV career with Oprah Winfrey back in 2010 on a show called Love Town. And since 2010, I've always had TV deals, but I haven't had very many projects come to life because they've been, you know, killed at certain stages. Right. But this opportunity with ABC came about in 2015 where I got my deal. And I was able to not just get the deal to host, a, a, to potentially host a show, Right. I got the deal to actually executive produce. And so I know this. And for those of us who like, you know, because we're all pretty much in a creative space, I think, especially my community. How important is that? Or was it for you that that be part of a deal? Not that you're just the face, even though you got a great face, but also that you have some ownership of it. Um, it, it it's, it's everything. As a creative, we all know that without the opportunity to also uh, spearhead what's happening with that creative, you know, it could turn into the most ratchet mess on the planet. And, and so that was always a requirement of me, which, by the way, that's the reason why I wasn't able to work on a lot of projects. Because it was a requirement. And, and here's what I would say to all creatives is that you must know your self-worth. You must know your value and never bend on that. You never bend on what you know that you are worth. And that, and that was a great lesson for me because I was patient. I waited and it took seven years. But now, you know, I, I had this huge opportunity. 
And so with the executive producing too, what was great is not only was I allowed to shape the content, but I was allowed to shape how we casted for the show, which is also incredibly important. I was also able to shape the length of time. So this show is the longest produced show ever in the history of TV because on Love. you follow them for a year, right? Exactly. You put them together, you follow them for a year. It was so funny when I was posting on Facebook. I don't know if my mom is on or not. When I was posting on Facebook, my mom sent me an email. She's like, did something happen? <laughs> She's like, why are you, are you going on a show? I was like, no, I'm, like, I'm, just, I'm just talking to him. But for a moment, I had this like, what, like how scary, or well, okay, let me frame it a different way. How courageous must these single moms be to let you spend a year in their life? I mean, now we know relationships and money, right? Those are like the two places that that we kind of get it twisted, right? And that's when all of our our stuff kind of bubbles up. And so I was thinking how courageous, you know, these moms must be to really let you into their lives and let you you fix some things. It was was a very delicate balance, very delicate because they were also fully aware of what's happening on reality TV right now. Right. Oh, now, yeah. Go in and, and, and literally change words and re-edit things. And, and so they were, they were concerned about that. And then on top of it, you have their children that are part of this. So that's where you, you can't mess. Don't mess with Mama Bear's child, right? So that, that, was, that was another part of it. And then the other part of it was this fact that, it, as you said, it's an entire year. Yeah. So it's not like they could just put on a certain face for two months or three months. Right? <laughs> you know, but they were like, they, we were living with them. And uh-huh. so it took a certain type of person. Yeah. It also took a certain type of crew. And I also I think it took a certain type of network like ABC to make it all happen. No, absolutely. So, it, it, because this is already done, so you know the outcome. We're not going to ask any questions. Um, but what was the biggest issue that you saw coming up? maybe throughout the, the season with these women? Um, so, so, so one thing to throw out too about, about how it plays out is we did follow three women, but tonight you're only seeing one. So what, what, what we're doing is, is we're trying to do a deep dive and focus on just one person. And right. the reason why is because when I watch TV, what I see now is you see seven people in 30 minutes. Right. <laughs> right. The reason why is because TV knows it's ADD. It's like, oh, da, 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 da. And so we wanted to slow things down and give you an in-depth look. So that's the reason why you're only going to see one person at a time. Now, the challenge that we saw, the challenge that we saw, quite honestly, is that I realized early in the process that they, that the particular women we were working with, that they had low self-esteem. Okay. Low self-love. Okay, low self-esteem and low self-love. Do you think that that's typical of most women, or do you think that it was there was an extra layer because they were single mothers? I, I think that's typical for most people. Okay, okay. fair. And the way that I, I look about men, I can only <laughs> I just know about my sisters. <laughs> but the re- the reason why I say, uh, and let, let, I'll define what I think self-love is. I think self-love is feeling like you were on the pathway to becoming your optimal self. Right. Like you can get there. No matter what the hurdles are, you can get around, you can get through, you can go under. But when you feel like the hurdles are too big and you can't become your best self, then that's that's not having self-love. And so right out the gate, we notice that. And then here's the challenge. The challenge is, so then how do you put them in a situation where they can start dating people? You can't do it unless you first focus on self. And so right away, we realized that we had to spend not just a day. You had, you had to take them through a boot camp <laughs> to get them ready for the boot camp. Exactly. Okay. So, so we took, so I took them for three months right. and just focused on them. And, and that, was, that was a big epiphany that we had to do that. Because also, Nikki, too, through this, we didn't pre-identify a fixed format for the show. Right. Okay. ABC was like, here's your crew of 67 people. We're going to follow you, you do your thing for the year, and then we'll, we'll then put it together in post-production. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let, let's, talk, let's talk about your boot camps. 
So see, Paul and I, we we met a long time ago. So we've known each other for quite right. a while. Here comes the story. Are you ready? I'm going to tell the story. So when I when I moved to Dallas to produce the Tom Joyner Morning Show, I had just really gotten divorced. And it was really the biggest, even though we were divorced, we were still together. So me leaving the state was the biggest separation we had. And so when I decided to date again, you and I have a conversation. And you told me some truths that had me like wanting to be single for the rest of my life. <laughs> because I think for a lot of us, and I, I'm, a, I'm a romantic, I will not, you know, I will be quite honest about that. I think there's some truths that we have to know about relationships that we would rather not be so. Yeah. So I know one of the things that we talked about was like the whole physical attraction thing. Like how some, especially moms, like I went through a state post-divorce where I was in sweatpants like every single day. And you were like, you are not going to find a man. <laughs> You're just not. And, and even though it was hard to hear some of those things, I really appreciated knowing them as I moved forward and, you know, and, and got into a relationship, the things that I had to do, not only to attract a man, but then to keep them. I mean, I really got a lot of that from you. So what were some of the hard truths or what are some of the hard truths that women and men need to know as single parents to begin to date again? Yeah, you know it's it's interesting, Nikki, because now I'm 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 going back to our conversation. <laughs> you broke my heart. I was like, oh my gosh. Oh, now I'm going back to it, and so, uh, but I tell you what, some of the hard truths are what what you just said. Like, let's talk about physical attraction real quick. Let's talk about it. Physical attraction is incredibly important. What what a lot of people like to throw out is that it's not that important or that physical attraction can go. Brady really loves me and love me for me, whatever that means. Exactly. exactly. I should get a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> he really loves me for me. Yeah, that's a good t-shirt. I like that. One. <laughs> but here's here's what all the research tells us, like all the research. It tells us that attraction actually does grow over over time. Like I'm, I've been married for 16 years this year, and I truly am even more physically attracted to my wife today than I was 16 years ago. That's the truth. But the reason why attraction grows over time is because it needs to start somewhere. There needs to be a minimum level. When you're in a pair of sweatpants, right? <laughs> minimum level, right? <laughs> right. So what a lot of us kind of forget coming out the, you know, jumping into the, the, the dating game is right. how important that is. When you were when you were on when you were on your first date, your first time with someone, in their mind, there's really two things they're sorting out. They're sorting out, are they physically attracted to you? Right. And they're sorting out how do we, you know, people some people say how do we vibe? Some people but it's really about how do you communicate? Can you communicate? Right. If you can communicate and there's mutual physical attraction. Guess what that means? That means there's chemistry. Yes. And <laughs> we like chemistry. You can now move some, you can now move, take it to the next level, but it begins there. And so that's how it's what physical attraction. A lot of people say it's not important. I'm going to tell you it is very important. A minimum level. Is very okay. Important. Okay. But let me, but let me ask you a question because I had a girlfriend that recently she went on a first date. She really likes, I mean, the guy is really, really nice. They've had great conversation. He's intellectual. I know we, Nikki, you said he's but really he's not, No, but she's not attracted to him. He's attracted to her, but she really doesn't feel chemistry with him, not the physical kind. And so I told, I said, give it a minute. I was like, you know, because she's she's later in years. I mean, she's not 20 anymore. I was like, well, give it a minute because you never, you never know. I'm not saying you should stay in it forever with no chemistry, but I think after the first date, it's a little soon. No. Nikki, if he has everything, <laughs> Nikki, you know he has everything else. It was okay. downhill. It was downhill when you said, "I have a girlfriend. She has a friend, and he's really nice." Like, okay. what? What you hear that? That he's really nice. I know. I know. But here's this is this is this is my real take on it. Is is okay. we never should give blanket advice. So, me as someone who is an, an advice giver a lot, what I hate is for everyone to take the words and then just to automatically apply it to their situation because every context is unique. So I'll just kind of put that out there. You just told me to shut up. <laughs> you just told me to stop giving advice to my girlfriends. I got you. No, this is me. This is me. <laughs> I heard shut up. No, no, never, never would I say that to you. Maybe to some other folks, but right. never would I say that to you. <laughs> 
But this is what I, this is what, this is just what I passionately believe is that this is the question you want to ask your, your girlfriend. This is going to be a very raw question, but this is the question. This is the, this is the question right now. Okay. All right, girlfriend. Do you, could you ever envision yourself having sex with this man? Can you, can you see it happening? Maybe you don't see it happening in three months or six months, right? <laughs> years. Do you see it happen? Like, can you see it? Because I've noticed that when I, so because when I ask the question, are you physically attracted? Then that becomes a uh, very ambiguous. Yeah. People define it differently. But when you break it down to, can you envision yourself at some point in the future? Having, then at that point, people will either say, well, yes or no. If the answer is no, I think I. <laughs> Move on, guys. Okay. 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 I'm clear. So let, let's talk about, because really the biggest element that makes this different from most of the reality shows, because I've been watching them all, like Married at First Sight, you know, I've got it. How do you introduce the children into the mix? And how soon is too soon? I, I mean, I'm always amazed at how quickly people will introduce their children to somebody that they're dating. Um, how, what is that transition like? This is such a great question. And, I, and you know how I want to answer it? Is watch tonight. Because, <laughs> okay. because this same issue came up. The same issue came up. And... How you introduce your child, or should I say not just how, but when, is very, very important. So my quick answer, though, is it's, it's never done right out the gate. I see too many folks do that. It's first day, oh, come on yeah. in. Come no. I didn't meet my kids. <laughs> like, no, okay. it, that ain't happening. And there's many okay. reasons why you should not do that. No, I get that. Now, is there, is there a too long? Can you wait too long to introduce the kids? Yeah, I've seen some people wait until the marriage day. I had a girlfriend that got married and then told the kids. Yeah, yeah. That that's, was a disaster. That that's that's a little that's a little too long. But then also, you know, it's it's very it depends on the situation, right? It depends on the age of the child. It depends on the relationship that 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 you have with the ex right. and the child has with the ex. I mean, there's so many nuances to it, but just general rule of thumb, you never introduce your child early to someone who has not made a commitment to you. You know, and I don't want to give too much away because we have a discussion about that in the show. Yeah, um, but yeah, but I think I think that that's a good reason to watch because we talk about that tonight. All right. So tonight it's Help I Need Love. It's at 10 p.m. Eastern on ABC. And like I said, Paul is on the social media thing. And so I want to make sure that we let him go in time so he can get to the next circuit. Um, so we're going to take some questions. So I, I saw some questions posted, but if you could repeat them, that would be great. I know one of the first ones, and this is a television question, um, was how did you, how do you break into television? If you're a brand, not necessarily groomed in the media business, but you're a brand, how do you break in and maybe develop your own projects or get connected with the right people, mentor some people around this? Yeah. This is a great question. And I'll tell everybody, I started on YouTube a series called The Modern Day Matchmaker that nobody watched. It would get like 11 views. And I knew mama was watching at least nine times. Yeah. So it was like, nobody was watching this thing. And then, you know, fast forward to now, I'm uh, executive producing the show. And so it can be done. I'm, I'm testimony can be done. The other thing too is I never had the interest in going to TV, right? That wasn't what I was trained to do. How you do it, I think it's really, you know, it's kind of delicate, but I'll, I'll give some quick tips. One is that content truly is king right now. And one thing that we have to realize is that there are more outlets, which means there are more buyers, which means there's higher demand for content. So you think back to the 1980s, there were, it was like ABC, NBC, CBS, and then you had Fox or Showtime, right? That, that's all the options we had. But now the average consumer has 189 channels, 189 channels. And that doesn't even include all the streaming platforms like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime. And so there are hundreds, if not thousands now around the world of buyers of content. So this is great if you are a content creator. So you want to constantly be creating phenomenal content. And where do you create that phenomenal content? Exactly what Nikki's doing right now. Facebook Live 
is one of the number one discovery platforms for producers and for networks right now. Uh, YouTube. <laughs> And I think it's like, I wish that, the, 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 well, I mean, I don't wish that I was born in this time, but this is such a great time for people who want to do anything, really. I mean, you can, like you said, there's YouTube, you can set up a blog, talk show. I mean, you can do whatever you want and you do it without having to ask permission from the ABCs or the, the other big platforms to give you way. So I always tell people, just start. You really just have to start. Absolutely. Start, get your content out there and then also build audience around your content. Yes. Because, because at the end of the day, a network is only thinking about eyeballs. You know, what a producer told me once, I'll never forget, he was like, Paul, a TV show is just two bookends for an advertisement. It's not the other way around. It's the yeah. TV show, that's the bookend for the advertisement. So a TV network wants to know that your content is going to keep eyeballs. It's going to attract and keep eyeballs. And so if you have a Facebook show or a YouTube show, that has an audience where you can show that you keep eyeballs, that's going to look really good to them. And that's for anything that you do nowadays in business. All people care about is how much visibility you're going to bring to whatever it is they're doing. We had another great question. This is really interesting. Somebody wants to know if they could get into the love um, and relationship business if they've never experienced it for themselves. All right. So th this, this is one where everyone has different answers. Here's how I respond. Right. And I'm not trying to shade anybody who's entered the business without the experience. But to me, would you go to a dentist with really bad teeth? Like, would you go to a to the gym to a trainer who's completely out of shape? Like, you know, we, hey, your video is getting kind of crazy. I'm not sure if it's me or you. Oh, I'm so, <laughs> so, so, the, so I like to answer that question with. What to me, what makes somebody qualify in any space, relationships, any space, any type of coaching, consulting, is that they have theory and they have practice. Theory, right. practice. And so you may not have the relationship experience yourself, but maybe you work with a hundred clients. And so therefore you have the practice and then you gather the theory somewhere else. But if you have a combination of theory and practice, you're good to go in my book. Okay, are you still there? Oh yeah, I could, I could, I could see you great. Okay. Yeah, I don't know, your, your video got kind of crazy, but what I think, and I just want to recap, because we have another question that I want to move on to, is that there's theory and there's practice. And some people get their experts while others get it through theory. Um, and so you have to have either one or the other in order to really be considered an expert. You can't just hang out a shingle and say, you know, listen to me. Is that what right. you said? Yeah. And I said that you have to have, you should have both the, the th theory and the practice. Okay. No, I agree with you. Okay, good. So I'm glad you got, you cleared that up. Um, the other question that I want to answer before we kind of start to wrap things up is one person asked, once you end a relationship, how do you, um, how you get over that longing for the intimacy um, so that you can heal before the next relationship? Great question. Real quick answer is you have to fill the void. That's how you do it. But you don't fill the void with someone else. You got to fill the void within yourself. So at the end of the day, we all have values. Values are what we live by, right? My values are family, spirituality, you know, ambition, creativity. So if I'm not feeding my values every day, I become unhappy. That's the bottom line. But if I'm feeding my values every day, I'm happy. I'm content. And so if, you, if you're in a situation where you were emotionally connected with someone, they're no longer in your life, and you really want to enter a place of happiness so you could really move on, a place of strength, identify your values and feed them like crazy. Feed them like crazy. Okay, got it. So I've kind of flashed some ways. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know if he's frozen or not. Wow. Nikki, can you, can you hear me or something? Okay. Um, yeah, we're having a little bit of video issue, so I just want to make sure that we talk about... 
Yeah, something is really going on with the video. So I want to make sure that we know how to support. Oh, I'm back, I guess. I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay. That was crazy. Um, but anyway, we want to thank Paul Brunson for stopping by. Um, we'll try to get him back again. I think maybe, you know, we can actually see the show. But make sure that you watch tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern uh, on ABC, Help, I Need Love. Um, it may come up as 2020 because this was a last minute um, replacement show. Um, so make sure that you double check and, and whatever. If you're not able to watch it live, you can set your DVR or you can download the app. All of that counts. Um, become an ambassador. You can share using on social media using the hashtag I need love um, and call some friends and let them know. Um, and also going forward, if you feel like hosting a live party, Paul will actually do some really special things um, for you if you decide to do that. And I'll share that information in the chat box. So I'm going to end because I think my so it's my internet that's going crazy. But I appreciate you guys stopping in. Um, it's help. I need love. Thank you for everybody that's telling me you see me. I appreciate that because I thought that that we were gone. Um, but I appreciate Paul. Please support him. It's really important if we want to see more of this kind of positive program programming and we want to see more content created by us on major networks that we really support. It is going to be crucial that we all show up tonight. So I appreciate you guys. Thanks for tuning in and I hope you enjoy the rest of your Saturday.